Hello guys, welcome to the channel. In this particular video, I will explain the problem unique number of occurrences. So the problem is pretty easy guys and asked by companies like Amazon, Google and Apple. Without any further delay, let me start with the problem statement. It says that you are given an array ARR of n integers. The task is to check whether the frequency of elements in the array is unique or not. Or in other words, there are no two distinct numbers in the array with equal frequency. After this, if all the frequency is unique, then you have to return true, else return false. So you can see that we have got the function of boolean type here, right? Now one example is given here. For this example, we have an array which contains the element 1, 1, 2, 5, 5. And we have to tell whether the frequency of each element is unique or not. Now first step is going to be storing the frequency value of each element. So we have the element 1 with frequency 2. After this, we have the element 2 with frequency 1. And you can see that I am underlining the value of each frequency, right? After this, we have the element 5 with frequency 2 again. So you can see that we have got two elements which have the same frequency value, right? So for this example, the output is going to be false because we don't have unique frequency values for each element, right? Now, I hope you have understood the problem statement. So let's talk about the solution now. Okay, so I have written one example here. And for this example, talking about the approach, so the first step is to store the frequency value of each element in a map, right? So how we can store this? Uh, just count the frequency of each element. We have the element 1 with frequency 1, right? After this, we have the element 2 with frequency 2. Then we have element 3 with frequency 3. After this, the element 4 has the frequency 4. Then we have the element 5 which has the frequency 3 again, right? Fine. Now, once we have stored the frequency, so our task is to just check whether all the frequency values are unique or what. Once we have checked it, then we can return the output as true or false, right? So first of all, let me write the frequency value in a separate data structure. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, right? Now our task is to check whether uh, like this particular array contains the duplicate value, right? So I am going to explain three different approaches to check for the duplicate elements now. But before that, make uh, always uh, like remember guys, I am writing these values in a separate uh, data structure just in order to explain you. Uh, otherwise, in the implementation purpose, we are going to use the same map, right? When like we are going to iterate the values over the same map. Fine. So now the question is how to check for duplicate elements. This is a question. The first approach that we have is for each element we can iterate over the array linearly and then we can check for the same element at any different index, right? Like you can see that for this element, if I check this element at different index, then I am able to find it, right? And once it's done, then we can see that there are duplicate elements. So this is about the brute force approach. This is about the brute force approach. And the complexity of this approach is going to be O of n square, right? Now, talking about the second approach, so the second approach is to write the data in the ascending order. We have 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, right? This is nothing but sorting. And for sorting approach, we are going to iterate over each element and then we are going to check whether any two adjacent elements are equal. So once we have found the equal adjacent element, then we can say that we have got duplicate elements, right? So this is going to have a complexity of O of n log n which is same as of sorting, right? Now the third approach is based on a set data structure, which is a kind of optimization on the brute force approach. So let's see how we can write this. What we are going to do is we are going to store every value in the set. But before storing the value in the set, we are going to check whether set already contains that value or not. For example, okay, uh, first of all, let me write a kind of pseudocode which is going to work as an algorithm and then I will uh, show you the dry run, right? So we have uh, we have 4 i equals to 0 to n, right? And then we have to store array of i. So before storing array of i, we will check if uh, like array of i in set. If this is present in set and then we can simply return false, right? Because we have found the duplicate elements here. Else we can store in the set. So I can write set dot add array of i array of i right what's interesting about this approach is we can say, uh, like check this particular thing in just o of one this is what a set data structure provides us right it is based on the concept of hashing and 
talking about the same thing in this particular approach so it was causing the complexity of o of n because we were searching linearly right this is the problem with the brute force now i have written this set based approach so what we can do is we can start iterating from the first element we have the first element one right and then we can check whether this element is present in the set so we have an empty set so we'll simply store the element after this we will come to this element which is two so we will check for two in the set two is not present so just store it right the, in the third iteration we will check for 3, 3 is not present, store it, then we will check for 4, 4 is not present, store it, then I will come to this 3 again and I will check for this 3 in the set, right, 3 is present, this means that we have got the duplicate elements, right, so this is how we can check for duplicate element using this particular set based approach, right, and let's say we don't, we don't have 3 here, we have 5 here, so this way we will not be able to find 5 in the set anywhere, right, so we will simply store 5. Now you can see that the loop is complete and we have not found any duplicate values, right? You, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There is no any duplicate value. So in that case, we have to return true at last. Return true, right? So this is about the approach. The first step is to store the value in the map and then the second step is to perform this, right? So this is how we can solve the problem. Talking about the complexity, so O of n for this step and O of n for this step again. So the total complexity will be O of n and space complexity will be again O of n, right? This is about space complexity and this is time complexity. So now let me show you the code. Okay, so I have written the Java code on the right hand side and C++ code on the left hand side. I have written the Python code on the right hand side as well, right? So the first step is to store every value in the map, right? I'm using unordered map in C++ and then hash map in Java. And after this, I have Python dictionary in uh, like Python, right? So after this, the second step is to check for duplicate element. This is how we can check for duplicate elements using set, right? And this is causing a time complexity of O of and here right this is the advantage that we are getting after using the set similarly we can use uh, the same approach here as well and after this we have the same approach like here as well right so this is all about this video i hope you guys will like the explanation thank you